everybody, this is your favorite rock and roll welder, Mr. Sawblade Head. I'm here to invite you to a very special weld.com build, just in time to get you in that Christmas spirit. Now, everybody loves a beautiful Christmas tree, even the artificial ones, even the metal <laughs> trees. Now, I'm not talking about the aluminum trees your grandparents used to have, or I'm not talking about my life tree. I'm talking about the iconic Charlie Brown Christmas tree. I'm gonna show you some different techniques I use welding different thicknesses and also texturing metal. So sit back, relax, enjoy. All right, here I am in the shop. I'm gonna to have to find what materials I have. I'm not, I'm not trying to overthink this. I'm literally gonna see what I have here in stock. I don't wanna make this uh, out of like solid stock until we get to the out, outer branches. Uh, I want this to be whimsical. Um, I'm gonna get some uh, tubing and go ahead and hammer that as well as cut it, show you some different techniques that I, that I like to use. I'm not gonna get into very realism or uh, very detailed stuff like I would get in with my life tree type of uh, style. Uh, but I want this very whimsical, except it's Charlie Brown Christmas tree. So let me see what I have here in stock and let's get going. <music> Now I think how I want to go ahead and take this on, um, I want to do this main because this this droop right here is very important to the overall look of it. If you don't get that right, get that essence of that ball just weighing that tree down, uh, everything else is just not going to work. So that's the most important. So I'm going to go ahead and do this main body and once I get that and I'm, and I'm happy with that, then I will work on these other branches right here. And then after that, I'll go ahead and do the pine needles. Okay, so what I wanna do now is kind of get a feel of the approximate size uh, of the Charlie Brown Christmas tree. And uh, to me, it looks like it's gonna be, I wanna say roughly probably about three feet. All right, now this is a special warning to all the welders out there. Um, you're used to seeing all these beautiful welds. Now for this artistic type of texturing, the penetration is gonna be good, the welds are gonna be ugly, and it is for a purpose, is to actually build up certain spots that I'm looking for, so when I do go ahead and sand some of those down, I'm actually raising and lowering certain textures in the metal that I want to pop out. Now I've had a lot of experience uh, working with this type of texture, and uh, you'll see in the outcome just how beautiful this stuff comes out. So it's something a lot different than what you're used to because that's not really the way that we're, you know, we're supposed to be trained to weld. However, as uh, long as your penetration is good, and then like I said, you can do multiple layers uh, of texture over top of it. So check it out. Rather than just weld on this thin edge of this pipe, what I do is I will actually start a tack so I actually have some additional thickness of metal to actually start welding from. So I'll go ahead and do an initial tack, build that up, and then my next weld will be on the existing tack weld and just keep on stitching from there. 
Plus that gives me different textures uh, and I'm able to uh, do different you know, circles or figure eights or whatever I want to do to help give me some of the textures that I'm looking for when I go to sand. Now I'll throw out my welding table, I have, I'll weld different size nuts as well as different diameter of pipe and I use this technique whether to hammer on or as I'm doing right here, taking different solid rod and actually you know, bending and shaping uh, to what I need in the project. Right here I took that same uh, inch and a half pipe that I did from the main trunk part and uh, cut it down so I can hammer it. So basically this is a transition piece from uh, you know, one size piece of pipe onto the next transition, which is gonna be this solid 3 8 rod. All right, so when I'm welding, uh, these two types of rods together, this is still a 3 8 to a quarter inch. I still set my heat to that 3 8 I start my weld pool on the thicker gauge material and I push it on over and then tie in the quarter inch rod. All right, uh, primarily have uh, the tree uh, mostly done. I am going to be, uh, you know, sanding down. So it has a slight taper on all the all the branches. I might do some additional little sculpting inside here as well. But the next step is actually doing all the little pine needles, and then also kind of and then bending these branches, kind of put them uh, exactly in place so that everything is not so flat. So all right. It's on to the next step. Okay, so I have some 1 8 solid rod. This is all carbon steel. What I'm going to do, I'm actually going to weld this to the table, kind of slightly spread it out like so. And what I'm going to do, this way when it's flat on the table, I'm going to go ahead and hit it with the sander. Uh, I want to kind of put, you know, I'm going to put a little flatter edge on it because I, once again, I want some texture to uh, the pine needles, not just, you know, just a, just a solid rod, just circular. And then once I do that, I'll, I might do it to the other side and then I'll cut it in this way. I'll start giving me my pine needles and I'll do them in different lengths, you know, from anywhere from like three, three to four, three and a half. I'm actually gonna go and uh, put, kind of put a slight contour when you go hammer it uh, a little bit and then start welding these things on one at a time. Majority done. Get ready to uh, add all the pine needles, and then do some uh, minor tweaks. Add base. All decorated, ready for Christmas.
welding this, uh, obviously with all the hammering and bending and everything, this metal got real thin. It wasn't very thick to begin with, but you know, with all the heat and everything, it got to be really brittle. So I have to fill this and uh, I'll show you a technique that I use sometimes when I just need to just get some extra support and extra metal you know, into a project. This way it's gonna make it actually structurally much stronger. I kind of feel like a dentist just drilling away a bad cavity of a tooth. Kind of like Hermie. Now, normally when I'm you know working with you know, nuts and bolts uh, I'll go ahead and let them soak in some white vinegar to take all the zinc coating off because it's actually very harmful to be breathing that in. I don't have time to do that so I just went ahead and you know sand that off actually kind of get a nice little taper so that'll go in just like so or I can go ahead and weld that in place and then just undo this bolt, fill that in here. Now since I'm using this whole nut here, I'm not gonna go push it flush, you know, like back in there. I'm actually gonna leave it, you know, like, uh, I don't know if it's about, a little, about an eighth inch sticking out so I can get some nice, so I can actually start my weld on that nut here, hit the metal here, and then be able to push the weld pull onto this you know, very thin metal, which is already quite fragile. And then once I tack all that up, then I can unscrew this bolt, bolt fit in there. And if I don't like this look of it sticking out, I have enough material on this nut to actually sand down, and give a little smoother contour to the tree base. Now when I'm welding the thinner 1 8 inch rod, now I'll set my machine kind of in between. It's, it's going to be less than the heat that I would normally use on, let's say, a quarter inch. However, it's going to be way too hot and it's just going to blow right through the 8 inch rod. So I dial it in between. I start my weld pull on the quarter inch rod and push that melded pull on over to that 8 inch and it just blends perfectly.
Well, that is a wrap for the Charlie Brown Christmas tree. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Hope you uh, learned something. Maybe you want to try out some of the different techniques that I use for uh, my artistic projects. And another thing I hope you guys will check out is the weld.com app. You can go ahead and sign up for free. However, if you want to get that great gift for a welder, get them the premium access for the app. Now, this gives them a year-round content, monthly giveaways, discount on a manufacturer's goodies like... Uh, you know, some gloves, which I hope please Santa will go ahead and bring me. But it's a gift that we're going to keep on giving you throughout the year. So once again, thank you very much. Go ahead and subscribe to YouTube. And don't forget, inspire, empower, create, and repeat. Sawbladehead and Wish you all a very Merry Christmas.